Welcome back to Daily Reddit Stories. Let's start with the story. My husband left me for his new friends, but when I found out about his gambling, I took him to court. Now he's left with nothing, while I have everything. My husband and I had been together for five years and we had always been happy. We shared everything from our hopes and dreams to our deepest fears. We were each other's best friends and I couldn't imagine my life without him. But then something changed. My husband started hanging out with a new group of friends. They were all single and they didn't seem to like the fact that my husband was in a committed relationship. They would always make snide remarks about me and try to convince my husband that our relationship was broken. At first I tried to ignore it. I thought that my husband would see through their lies and come back to me. But as time went on, he became more and more distant. He started spending less time with me and more time with his friends. I tried to talk to him about it, but he brushed me off. He said that his friends were just joking around and that I was overreacting. But I could feel the distance between us growing wider and wider. To make matters worse, I couldn't stand his new friends. They were loud, obnoxious, and disrespectful. They would always make crude jokes and talk about women like we were objects. I didn't want my husband to be associated with people like that. I tried to talk to my husband about it, but he wouldn't listen. He said I was being too judgmental and that I needed to give his friends a chance, but I just couldn't bring myself to do it. Every time they were around, I felt uncomfortable and out of place. To make matters even more complicated, my husband's old friends didn't like his new friends either. They would always make comments about how they were a bad influence on him and how they were changing him for the worse. But my husband didn't seem to care. He was determined to prove them wrong. I could feel our relationship starting to unravel. My husband was becoming more and more distant, and I didn't know how to stop it. I tried everything I could think of, but nothing seemed to work. And then, one day, he dropped the bombshell. He told me that he wanted a divorce. He said that our relationship was broken beyond repair, and that it was time for us to move on. I was completely devastated. I couldn't believe that he would give up on us so easily. I didn't know what to do or where to turn. All I knew was that my life would never be the same again. I felt like I had lost everything that mattered to me. But then I decided to take matters into my own hands. I knew that my husband had been convinced by his new friends that our relationship was broken and that they had played a part in his decision to leave me. I was determined to make them pay. I started gathering evidence of their influence over him. I recorded their conversations and took screenshots of their text messages. I wanted to prove that they had manipulated him into leaving me and that they had played a role in destroying our relationship. As I gathered more evidence against my husband and his new friends, I stumbled upon something even more shocking. I found out through his laptop that he had been making huge bets with his new friends behind my back. He had been betting thousands of dollars on sports games and other events, and he had been using our joint savings account to fund his gambling habit. I was furious. Not only had he left me for his new friend's influence, but he had also been gambling away our future together. I knew that I had to take him to court and make sure that he was held accountable for his actions. With the new evidence, the court case became even more intense. I fought tooth and nail to make sure that I got everything that was rightfully mine. I didn't want to leave anything up to chance. I wanted to make sure that my husband paid for his betrayal. In the end, my efforts paid off. The court ruled in my favor and I was able to take everything from my husband. He was left with nothing. No money, no home, no friends. He was completely alone and had no one to turn to for support. His new friends, who had convinced him to leave me in the first place, had abandoned him when he needed them the most. I found out later that they had been using him for his money and connections. They had never really cared about him as a person. He was simply a means to an end for them. When he lost everything in the divorce, they had no reason to associate with him anymore. In fact, when he tried to reach out to them for help, they pretended like they didn't know him. They ignored his calls and messages, and when he showed up at their doorstep, they turned him away. It was clear that their friendship had never been genuine. They had manipulated him into leaving me, and when it all blew up in his face, they had no qualms about abandoning him and pretending like they had never been friends in the first place. For my ex-husband, the realization was devastating. He had lost everything. His wife, his money, and his friends. It was a harsh lesson, but one that he had brought upon himself. As time went on, my ex-husband's attempts to reach out to his old friends became more frequent. He would call, send text messages, and even show up unannounced at their homes, hoping for some kind of support or comfort. But it was clear that his former friends wanted nothing to do with him. They were hesitant to talk to him, and when they did, it was clear that they saw him as a toxic influence. 
I knew all of this because I had been keeping tabs on him. I didn't want anything to do with him, but I was curious to see how he was doing after everything that had happened. I would hear from mutual acquaintances about his attempts to reach out and I would see his messages and missed calls on my phone. One day, I received a call from his ex-best friend, the one he had blown up on when he tried to convince him to reduce contact with his new friends. His ex-best friend was hesitant to talk to me at first, but eventually he opened up. He told me about how my ex-husband had repeatedly lashed out at him when he tried to offer some friendly advice. He had become aggressive and hostile, and it was clear that he was not the same person they had once known. It was then that I realized just how much his new friends had influenced him. They had turned him into someone I didn't recognize, someone who was willing to give up everything for their approval. And now that he had lost everything, including his wife and his money, they wanted nothing to do with him. It was a bitter pill for my ex-husband to swallow but it was a lesson he needed to learn. He had been blinded by his desire to fit in with his new friends and he had lost sight of what was truly important in life. And now that he had nothing left, he was forced to confront the harsh reality of his decisions. Update 1. I was surprised to see him standing on my doorstep looking defeated and desperate. It had been three months since the divorce and I had heard nothing from him since the court ruling. But here he was, begging for my forgiveness and asking me to take him back. He was in a sorry state. His clothes were wrinkled and he looked like he had been up all night. I couldn't help but feel a pang of sympathy for him. But at the same time, I knew that he had brought all of this upon himself. He began to pour out his heart, confessing how wrong he had been, how much he had regretted his decision, and how much he missed me. He promised that he would do anything to make it up to me and begged me to give him another chance. But I couldn't forget the pain that he had caused me. I couldn't forget the betrayal, the lies, and the heart attack. I couldn't forget that he had thrown away everything we had built together for a group of friends who had used him and left him with nothing. So I told him that it was too late. I told him that I had moved on and that he needed to do the same. I told him that he needed to learn from his mistakes and start over without me. He didn't take it well. He began to plead with me, promising to change, to make it up with me, to do whatever it takes. But I stood my ground. I refused to let him back into my life, knowing that it would only lead to more heartache. In the end, I told him to go have fun with the friends he had left me for. I had no interest in being with someone who was so easily swayed by the opinions of others. As he walked away defeated and broken, I couldn't help but feel a twinge of sadness. But at the same time, I knew that it was the right decision. He had brought all of this upon himself and he needed to learn from his mistakes. Danta, he's a pathetic and weak man who couldn't stand up for himself. He let his new friends manipulate him into leaving his wife and now he's paying the price for his foolishness. I don't know, taking everything from her ex-husband was unnecessary and cruel. She should have just moved on with her life and let him suffer the consequences of his own actions. He's a fool who made a series of bad decisions that led to his downfall. He deserved to lose everything because he put his trust in the wrong people and ignored the warning signs. Santa, OP, and his old friends tried to advise him multiple times. OP deserved to get everything. He would have just gambled everything away. Next story. I just want to preface this by saying that I, male 42, appreciate the work of educators. This isn't intended to be a shot at them. My son, 13, is a good kid who follows the rules, does his homework, and generally does well in school. He's also very pragmatic and doesn't take kindly to authority figures who try to shame or bully him. So, on to the incident at hand. About a month ago, my son was assigned a project in one of his classes. The assignment was to interview three people in different professions and discuss the commonalities they share and the differences between the various jobs. It was an assignment I thought was a great opportunity for my son to explore his talents and options for his future. My son interviewed three people for his project. Our garbage collector, our neighbor who works in finance, and his aunt who does business consulting. My son then crafted a report about his project, noting the differences and similarities between the three professions. However, when my son presented his project to his class, the teacher made some inappropriate remarks about his choice of interviewees, saying that a trash collector is not an appropriate profession to compare against finance and business consulting. Do you want to end up as a trash collector? She asked my son. Of course, this embarrassed him and made his class laugh. I was not pleased. 
So I set up a meeting with the principal and the teacher and I told her exactly how I felt. I told her that my son should have the freedom to explore whatever avenues he wants to explore. The principal said she understood, but education and trash collection do not exactly go hand in hand. The teacher just smiled in a, we both know I'm right kind of way. I lost it, telling her that she needs to create a more open and accepting environment for students and that if she wants to make her school a better place, she needs to stop shunning certain careers. Here's where I may have gone wrong. I told the teacher that she needs to reconsider her role as an educator if she's going to think so narrow-mindedly. I know it's not my place to tell an educator to reconsider her role. At the same time, though, I don't think it's right for a teacher to discourage a student from exploring their own potential roles in life. So, Ida, I want my son to be successful and happy. But was this remark about the teacher going too far? Duh, your comment was minor in comparison and doesn't swing it to an ESS in my view. What gets me, though, is what was the actual value of this assignment. If this compare-contrast exercises to help the kids work out what kind of career they'd like, this is a really ineffective, or at least inefficient way to go about it. I could get it as a way to understand, or help children understand the value and experience of a different array of jobs and experiences in society. Yet, the teacher is acting like this is a substitution for careers advice, which it blatantly isn't. Danta. I, 36 male, was told by my father more times than I can count that the first was going to be a loser, worthless, and that I'd end up a garbage man. It stuck with me my whole life and it's affected many decisions I've made. These decisions ended up with me in rehabs and hospitals over the stress of being someone important. I've now been sober three years as of Christmas Eve and have given up trying to impress anyone with what job I have. Hell, a garbage man may be the right call. I wish I would have had someone stand up against that. Next story. So I, 18 male, came back home from college for the holidays. Yesterday, my parents hosted a family dinner with all my aunts, uncles, grandparents, and cousins. So the issue started when dinner was served. I got my food and sat down at the table. The way the tables were laid out was that the table in the dining room was for the adults and the table in the kitchen was for the kids. I obviously sat at the adult table. Then, one of my aunts came up behind me and barked, what do you think you're doing? I responded confused with eating my food. She then said, you're not allowed to sit here. Get to the kids' table right now. I laughed at that and said, I have just as much right to be here as you do. You have no authority over me? Stop trying to start drama and just sit down and eat your food? She then burst into a rant and I just rolled my eyes and ignored her and continued eating my food while talking to my parents and other relatives. After the dinner, my parents asked me to apologize. Apparently, she filled the aunt's group chat with passive-aggressive remarks about me as well as calling me disrespectful and claiming I grew up with no discipline. I do not feel the need to apologize, but I will if I'm T.A. Edit, I should probably clarify the sitting situation. I set the table specifically so there was enough for all of the adults and all of the kids with seats to spare in case people decide to move around. Danta. And if you really were... Then someone at the table would have told you to get up and move. I imagine someone or multiple people heard your aunt berate, but didn't say anything probably because you had every right to be at the table. I will say it sounds problematic that no one stood up for you. Does your aunt get away with that condescending behavior often? Next story. My wife does not understand why there are black bars in movies. The greatest thing that ever happened to me was when all TVs started being sold at 69 instead of 43. Before we got our new TV, I would have to spend half an hour at the beginning of every movie trying to explain that there wasn't anything cut out in those areas. That if the movie was going to fill out the TV screen, then we would actually lose out on the stuff happening on the left and right sides of the movie every single time. So we got together yesterday with a bunch of her teacher friends. The TV was on in the background and someone was out on the hateful eight. It was filmed in a super wide aspect, so even on the TVs we have now, there is still a black stripe top and bottom. My wife noticed and started complaining about why they were cutting off the top and bottom of movies again. All of her friends started trying to explain it to her. One of them finally got out some construction paper and cut out the shape of films and screens and got her to understand. When we got home, she was pissed at me for not explaining it to her and letting her look like an idiot. I asked her if she remembered that she used to always complain and all the times I explained it to her. 
I literally had to go out and get cardboard and cover the sides of the TV like I used to before to get her to remember. She's still mad at me, but I'm not sure what else I could have done. I thought I would never have to deal with this problem ever again. Ida? Danta? My mother does this and she always has. It's not an age thing. I have come to realize that the real issue is not that she doesn't understand after multiple explanations on whatever the reoccurring issue is. It's that she doesn't want it to be that way and that's just her way of complaining. Instead of explaining for the millionth time, I just say sorry that bothers you and move on. Thanks for watching till the end. Wishing you an awesome day. Feel free to drop a comment if you've got more to share. I'd love to hear from you.